Today I'm going to show you how to do a Kitchener stitch in a garter stitch style using twisted stitches and incorporating beads. I've previously knit two halves of a scarf. I wanted both edges to be identical with the beadwork, so I cast on from either end and worked throughout the whole entire scarf until I came to the half point length that I like for each side, which leaves me with two sides that I need to join. You can use a three needle bind off to do this, but I'm going to use the Kitchener stitch today. The supplies that are required in order to do this are the two halves of your scarf with the still on the needle, approximately 30 inches or so of this um, leftover tail that we're going to use to work the Kitchener stitch. I've also got extra beads so that I can add them on in the appropriate place. And instead of using a tapestry needle today, because I'm using the beads, I'm going to use one of these little dental threaders. I got this as a sample packet when I asked my dentist about it. And it, this particular one is called Bridge Aid. It's a little bit more rigid than some of the others. It's a dental floss threader, and it works very well in place of the tapestry needle, which allows me to also put the beads on. I'm using number six beads, and they're fairly small, and they just don't fit over a regular tapestry needle. The techniques that we're going to use today will involve the Kitchener stitch, incorporating the twisted stitches, as well as the beadwork. If you've not done any of these things before, um, there are other videos that will show you how to do a standard Kitchener stitch, um, which gives you a stockinette finish when you're through. Because we're doing the garter stitch, this is a slightly different variation. I'm also going to keep in style with my pattern, which I use slip stitches on either side of the beads to kind of help keep them in place. So I'm going to make a little bit of an adjustment even to that garter stitch style Kitchener stitch than what you typically might see. Um, and of course I'm going to add the beads in in the appropriate place. So I need to be able to thread the beads on and slide them up where I need them. I'm holding the two halves together with the wrong sides um, facing each other. I've denoted the wrong sides because that's the side that I would not be working on next. Um, where my tail is left on the front one, I've tied it up a bit so it's out of the way, and I'm going to be working from the back one, so I've left this one free so I can thread it on and use this to stitch. I've also incorporated lifelines on either side of these halves so that in the event that I have to take it out or I lose a stitch or something, with working with this rayon ribbon yarn, it's very slick and the stitches get away very quickly and all of a sudden you might have a dropped stitch that's 30 or 40 rows below and I do not want that to happen. So I've included using dental floss as my lifeline because it's very thin and it won't attach in any way to the fabric that I'm working with. And as this beadwork is very heavy, I'm going to set all of it behind me on the table for support. Now to begin, I'm going to grab my little threader and I'm going to string it on to my rayon ribbon as I would if it were a tapestry needle. So that's fairly self-explanatory. I'm going to walk you through each step that I'm making and I'm going to do the first entire section um, which in this particular pattern is five edge stitches and a bead in, the, in between each of the five stitches consecutively. I also have, as I mentioned before, those twisted stitches on either side of the bead. So I have to factor that in when I get to those stitches that I reverse the way I go into them. Holding the two together, I'm going to work fairly close to the edge. And again, this yarn is incredibly slick, so try and keep your finger on the ones you're not working with. Just in case they want to pop off, you can have a little bit more tension to keep them in place. I'm going to go into the first stitch on the first needle as if to knit, and I'm going to slip that stitch off. And I'm going to pull my thread or yarn through. I'm now going to go into this stitch on the front needle, the next stitch, as if to purl, but I'm going to leave it on. And as I said, this yarn is really slick. It doesn't want to go where you tell it to. You have to force it. And I'm going to pull this all the way through, leaving that stitch on the needle. Now I'm going to go to the back one. And since this is garter stitch, this is the variance between what you typically might see on a sock kitchener stitch. I want to have the purl bump 
on my exterior side as opposed to my interior, interior side. So instead of going in as if to purl, I'm gonna do the same thing on the back needle as I did on the front. I'm gonna go in the first stitch as if to knit and slip it off my needle. And then I will pull the yarn through. And I really make an effort to keep my fingers on the top of these stitches so that they do stay where I want them to. I'm going to now go into this new stitch on the edge as if to, to purl and leave it on the needle. And that will have given me my first two stitches as part of the Kitchener stitch off the needles. I'm going to pull the yarn all the way through. And I got it caught on this front one. I want to pull that off. Now I'm going to go back to the front needle and I'm going to go in the first stitch. as if to knit and slip it off and pull my yarn through. I'm going to go into this new stitch as if to purl and leave it on. I'm going to go into the back stitch as if to knit and slip it off. Pull my yarn through. And again, I'm really holding on to those stitches on the needle so they have no opportunity to escape. I'm going to go into the next stitch on the back needle as if to purl. I'm going to go into the front needle stitch as if to knit and slip it off and pull my yarn through. Go into the next stitch on the front needle as if to purl and leave it on. Go into the back stitch as if to knit and slip it off and pull my yarn through. I'm also taking care to keep the working yarn underneath the two needles so that I don't have a yarn over from it wrapping over the needle. I'm going to go into this stitch on the back as if to purl and leave it on. Now, I'm at the point where I'm almost ready to have a slip stitch. I have two stitches before my bead, and the bead, as I said before, is on either side of the slip stitch. So my first stitch, I'm going to go in as if to knit and slip it off as I always do, and pull my yarn through. Now the second stitch, because it's next to the bead and I want it to, to be a twisted stitch, I'm actually going to go into the back loop as if to purl and leave it on instead of going into the front loop. This is the, the part that will create the first step that will create the twisted stitch. Now I'm going to go back to the back needle as if to knit and slip this off. And again, I'm right next to my next bead so I need to go into this back loop as if to purl and leave it on. And now the second part of that twisted stitch is that when I go into this as if to knit and slip it off, I want to make sure I go into this back loop to slip it off. I've gone into the back loop as if to knit and slipped it off. Now I have to incorporate my bead. So I'm going to set this down for just a second. I'm going to grab a bead and I'm going to slide this bead all the way down into the place where it would be in line with all of my other stitches and beads. And here's the bead from the row below and I'm adding this bead here. Now again, on the other, either side of this one, it's going to leave a twisted stitch so I have to go in to the back of this one as if to purl. So I'm going in from the left. It's a little tricky to get those in there sometimes. And leave that one on. That's the beginning of the twisted stitch on the left side of the bead. Now it is true that when you're doing this Kitchener stitch your tension may be a little bit wonky. So keep that in mind and don't worry about that. It can be corrected after by going back and drawing through the excess yarn. 
Now I'm going to go into the back one as if to knit through the back loop, finishing this twisted stitch. And I have a bead on this side as well I have to add. So I'm going to set this back down. I'm going to grab my bead and slide that into position. And then in keeping with the twisted stitch on the left side of the bead, I have to go into the left hand side, the left hand stitch from the back as if to purl and leave it on. And then I'm going to go back to the front needle and I'm completing my twisted stitch to the left of the bead. I'm going to go in the back as if to knit the back loop and slip it off the needle. Now I'm past the flip the twisted stitches so I'm going to continue the next three in the same fashion as before. I'm going to go in this as if to purl and leave it on the needle. I'm now going to complete the back twisted stitch by going in as if to knit into the back loop and sliding it off. And now I'm going to go into the next one as if to purl and leave it on. And I will continue in this manner all the way across. I have three knit stitches in between a twisted stitch and a bead. So I have to continue the sequence all the way across. Let me give you a idea of how this is going to look as we finish it. Pull this out of the way. Um, you can see that I have got my beads lined up here. I have a purl, a knit, a purl, a knit, a purl, a knit, a purl, a knit, continually. It's kind of hard to see. The tension isn't quite exactly how I'd like it. And I've got, of course, those lifelines in. So when I've completed the entire edge, I will go ahead and pull the lifelines out. I will lay it out flat and make any adjustments to tension that I might need to make. And then I will weave in one end from this yarn that we've been working across on this side. And I'll go back and weave in the end from this one on this side, which will give me a nice finished look where, with no transition. And it will be very smooth all the way across. And it will also allow me to keep the beads in line. If you have any other questions, feel free to email me at kimretz at gmail.com. You can also find me on Ravelry. My username is Cash. I will have this pattern posted at some point in the future on Ravelry. It's also available for free with purchase of the yarn at quillandfiberarts.com. Look me up. Thanks.